Hi, it's Katrina. Wooden Sea Monster. The Gripshunden was a Danish warship that caught fire and sank to the bottom of the Baltic Sea all the way back in 1495. Many lives were lost, and most of the vessel remains underwater today near the Swedish town of Ronneby. It was rediscovered during the 1970s, but wasn't positively identified as the Gribschunden until 2013. It's considered to be the best preserved shipwreck of its era, and may be the only ship of its kind from that time period, making it a pretty incredible shipwreck on its own. In 2015, over 500 years after the Gribschunden plunged into its watery grave, a wooden figurehead depicting a sea monster was brought to the surface. The 11-foot-long, 660-pound creature has lion-like ears and a crocodile mouth. It once sat proudly atop the ship's prow. It's unlike any other 15th-century artifact ever found throughout the world, according to Marcus Sandiker, who led the recovery effort. He told reporters that the creature in the carving could reflect the ship's name, which translates to Grip Dog or Griffin Hound. Archaeologists hope to raise more of the wreck, which could help them learn more about what shipbuilding was like during the 15th century. While that info would surely be fascinating, the origin of the Grip Dog or the Griffin Hound itself as a creature remains a strange mystery. Underwater Arctic Volcanoes Exploring beneath the permanent ice in the remote Arctic is incredibly difficult. It requires good timing, a degree of luck, and a powerful steel-hulled ship called an icebreaker, which plows through the ice but also floats along with it. And it's hard to imagine that you would find anything hot in a region that's known for its unforgiving cold. But there are a series of underwater volcanoes, or hydrothermal vents, at the bottom of the Arctic Ocean. In October, a team of over two dozen scientists embarked on an expedition in hopes of exploring some of them. Luckily, the conditions were favorable, giving them the opportunity to investigate the depths using an underwater robot. It marked the beginning of what deep-sea ecologist Eva Ramirez Lodra described as a new frontier of exploration in the Arctic. The robot descended 13,000 feet to a region known as the Aurora Vent Field. It's a fascinating, pitch-dark world filled with geyser-like vents called black smokers that spew hot volcanic material into the water. Surprisingly, there is life in this seemingly inhospitable region, where snails, worms, crustaceans, and other creatures have evolved to survive on volcanic chemicals and in the complete absence of light. Active vent fields are incredibly rare. Combined, all the known environments of this kind in the world would occupy an area smaller than the city of San Francisco. Scientists say that it's important to protect these otherworldly habitats, which are threatened by the prospect of deep-sea mining. To better learn how they can do that, they took samples of the life they found there. Experts also believe that there may be chemicals in and around hydrothermal vents that may prove useful for treating cancer and other serious illnesses. All the more reason to protect these incredible anomalies, Earth's environments prove to be even more strange and diverse than we imagined. Giant Phantom Jelly The giant phantom jelly is largely a mystery to scientists, even though the first specimen was collected all the way back in 1899. It was finally identified as a new species 60 years later. Since then, experts from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, or MBARI, have only spotted it nine times. Scientists in general have only encountered the creature around 100 times. The creature's bell can reach more than one meter across, and its arms can grow to 10 meters or longer, making it one of the world's largest jellyfish species. It's certainly not small or hard to spot, and it's known to live in all of the planet's oceans except for the Arctic but it's typically only found at depths between 900 and 4,000 meters, which is why sightings are incredibly rare. While piloting a submarine in the waters off Monterey Bay recently, Ambari researchers spotted one of these strange specimens lurking at around 975 meters below the surface. By taking advantage of the rare opportunity to observe a giant phantom jelly, the team learned more about the ecological role it plays within its habitat. For example, in an environment that offers few options in the way of shelter, some fish take refuge beneath the giant phantom jelly. Learning more about the species will be tough, but unexpected encounters like this are certainly helping to speed the process along. Baltic Sea Anomaly 
During the summer of 2011, a group of Swedish treasure hunters known as the Ocean X team discovered a strange disc-like formation on the floor of the Baltic Sea, 300 feet below the water's surface. Conspiracy theorists were quick to classify the 210-foot-long object as a UFO. Team leader Peter Lindbergh claimed that the structure was built before the last ice age, which peaked around 20,000 years ago. He also implied that the group had discovered Atlantis, the mythical home of a so-called lost civilization. Nearly all mainstream scholars consider Atlantis to be a fictional place that never existed. Lindbergh did admit that the formation could be natural, but he clearly preferred to focus on the more far-fetched possibilities. Stockholm University scientist Volker Bruchert analyzed a sample of the rock and found nothing out of the ordinary. He explained that it was made up of different types of granites and sandstones, which are what an expert would expect to find in a rock from a glacial basin. One of the samples contained basalt, which Bruchert described as out of place but not unusual. Like many other experts, he believes that the so-called Baltic Sea Anomaly is nothing more than an oddly shaped glacial deposit that to some looks a lot more exciting than it actually is. So what do you think? Underwater UFO wreckage? The remnants of a lost civilization? Or simply a glacial deposit? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below! Want to give a big shout out to Michaela Montgomery and Penny Plant and Dad! Hi Dad! Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained! We wouldn't be here without you! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing discoveries. Mammoth Tusk While exploring along the Pacific Sea floor off the California coast in 2019, scientists from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute that I mentioned before spotted what looked like a mammoth tusk. They were roughly 185 miles from land when they spotted the out-of-place object 10,000 feet below the water's surface. They were using a remotely operated vehicle or ROV, and you just never know what you might find with these. The obvious question that followed was how in the world a three-foot-long mammoth tusk ended up where it was found. The team determined that the artifact belonged to an extinct Colombian mammoth who died around 100,000 years ago. A prehistoric tusk this old is an extremely rare find on land, but this is the first time one has been discovered in the ocean and it's shocking that it wasn't destroyed or buried after spending all of that time at the bottom of the sea, according to marine biologist Stephen Haddock. The tusk is remarkably well-preserved owing to the dark, frigid conditions along the ocean floor. It might even be the most intact mammoth tusk from that part of North America, making the find even more incredible. Scientists plan to perform CT scans and will try to extract DNA in hopes of learning more about mammoth lineages. It could prove especially helpful because Colombian mammoths are hybrids of two different species, but their origins and when the hybridization began remains unclear. An Unusual Ancient Sea Star 480 million years ago, the supercontinent Gondwana was the dominant landmass on Earth. Situated near modern-day Antarctica, it was made up of parts of what are now Africa, South America, Australia, Antarctica, the Arabian Peninsula, and the Indian subcontinent. At the time, a starfish-like creature lived in a cold-water reef among an array of other prehistoric alien-like species that look nothing like the marine species that exist today. It looked arguably more modern than the animals that shared its habitat but lacks the characteristics that scientists reference when telling apart modern starfish and brittle stars. This indicates that the ancient marine species is an ancestor of both. It might also be related to other echinoderms, including sea lilies. A fossil of the creature was discovered nearly two decades ago in the Moroccan desert, but it wasn't identified as a new species until last year. Lead study author Aaron Hunter says that the ancient starfish takes researchers straight to the origins of its modern-day relatives, which have a widespread presence throughout the world's oceans. It appeared during the Great Ordovician Biodiversification Event, which was marked by the longest and most sustained increase in marine biodiversity in the history of the world. There are still several mysteries surrounding the newly described species. Scientists found evidence of a jaw indicating that it wasn't a filter feeder, and they are not sure what it ate. And there are still gaps in the creature's history that require more research. But don't worry, they're on the case. Bizarre Holes 
In 2019, researchers from Ambari again made another discovery. They announced the presence of strange holes in the seabed off the Big Sur, California coast. The first of these pits, known as pockmarks, was discovered 20 years earlier during a seafloor survey. Scientists found thousands more over the following years. The largest holes measure 600 feet across and 16 feet deep on average. A statement from the researchers described them as nearly circular and fairly evenly spaced. There are over 5,200 pockmarks spanning a 500 square mile area. Scientists don't know what caused the holes to form or why there are so many of them, according to Ambari researchers Eve Lunston and Charles Paul. They also found over 15,000 smaller holes called micro depressions, which measure 11 feet across and 3 feet deep on average. Lunston and Paul describe them as recently formed erosional features. And that's about all experts know about the odd otherworldly holes. What do you think they are? Let me know in the comments below. Boiling Siberian Sea In 2019, a team of scientists traveled to a part of the eastern Siberian Sea that they knew produced methane long ago as part of an expedition to study the effects of thawing permafrost beneath the ocean. They didn't expect to see any active methane fountains, but to their surprise, that's precisely what they found. Occupying an area of somewhere between 43 and 54 square feet, the stream of boiling methane bubbles had a gas concentration measuring 6 to 7 times higher than the global average. Permafrost stays frozen for tens of thousands of years, and it doesn't only exist on land, it also occurs underwater and is actually the reason for the discovery of the methane fountain. When permafrost melts, the organic material it contains breaks down and releases methane. This is concerning because as more permafrost thaws, more methane enters the atmosphere, which leads to increased warming. It's the last thing we need in a world that's already threatened by the effects of climate change as global temperatures increase at their highest rate in tens of millions of years. Scientists refer to this vicious cycle as a positive feedback loop. For now, the methane fountains that the scientists discovered are too small to have a worldwide impact, but as the Siberian permafrost continues to thaw, it seems as though the situation could get worse. Submerged Ancient Forest Off the Alabama coast in the Gulf of Mexico, there is a 60,000-year-old cypress forest that once stood on dry land and above sea level. The trees sprouted along the banks of a river shortly after humans are thought to have started migrating out of Africa. Old fallen trees became buried in sediment, and sea levels eventually rose due to rising global temperatures, submerging the entire forest. It sat undisturbed until Hurricane Ivan struck in 2004, disturbing the seabed and revealing the prehistoric trees in Mobile Bay. The trees were shockingly intact after spending thousands of years encased in sediment, which prevented oxygen from reaching them and causing them to decay. But now that they were exposed, scientists knew that they had a limited amount of time to study the ancient forest. In 2019, researchers collected samples of the wood as part of a NOAA-funded expedition. The following year, they announced that the trees may contain materials that could be used to develop life-saving medicines. The team of experts removed over 300 organisms from the wood, including a previously unknown shipworm species that produced over 100 types of bacteria. Many are new to science and are undergoing DNA testing to determine their potential medical uses, including as painkillers and anti-cancer drugs. In the past, at least one type of shipworm-related bacteria has proven promising as a possible antibiotic against parasitic shipworm infections. Researchers are also investigating the wood's potential usefulness in paper products, renewable fuels, chemicals, animal feeds, and more. Large Glowing Sharks Last year, scientists discovered three shark species that glow in the dark while studying the creatures off New Zealand. The trait, known as bioluminescence, is common among marine animals, but this was the first time that it was observed and documented in those particular species, which include the kite fin shark, the black belly lantern shark, and the southern lantern shark. At up to 6 feet long, the kite fin is the largest known bioluminescent vertebrate. All three live in the mesopelagic or twilight zone of the ocean, at depths of up to 3,300 feet. 
Their bellies glow, and researchers think may help camouflage them from predators that attack from beneath by making it harder to see them against the bright water above. But the kite fin shark, one of the slowest swimming species, has few natural predators, if any. So why would it need to blend in with its surroundings then? Researchers speculate that it makes itself glow to disguise itself while approaching prey, or to illuminate the sea floor while it searches for food. The study's authors admit that more investigation is needed before they can make a definitive conclusion. One way or another, though, it's clear that bioluminescence plays a critical role in marine ecosystems. Humpback Whale in the Forest A couple of fishermen were walking through a mangrove forest in Brazil when they came across something they wouldn't have expected to see in a thousand years. Lying in the jungle, far from any body of water, was the enormous decaying carcass of a whale. But how in the world did a humpback whale make it all the way into the Amazon jungle from the coast? Experts say it probably got lost at sea and then died from starvation or another unknown cause. Judging by its size, much smaller than most adult whales, the creature was just a baby. After dying, it likely got stranded on the Araruna beach near a small town in the mouth of the Amazon River and then was pushed inland by the tide. It was the rainy season when the whale was discovered, which means that the tide rises nearly 12 feet twice a day during this time. The forest then floods continuously as the water carries all kinds of surprises like abandoned ships and garbage deep into the jungle. In this case, the tide brought along the whale carcass as well. The whale was easier to carry on the tide thanks to decomposition. Experts believe the whale had been dead between four and five days before its body was discovered in its unusual resting place. Even at an outstanding 24 feet long, the whale was easily carried into the forest because it was bloated and buoyant, making for quite an unpleasant and surprising discovery. The Screaming Lady of Mason County In the woods south of the Great Bend in the Ohio River, in a dark and eerie part of West Virginia, there is a ghost. At least, that's what the locals say. The story of the ghost that haunts the big woods in West Virginia goes back over 150 years. Back in the 1850s, there was a small pocket of farmland surrounded on all four sides by thick woods. As the story goes, a group of lumberjacks or laborers were walking out of the forest one day, finished after a long shift of cutting down trees, and they spotted Mary. She was alone on the family farm while her parents, David and Catherine Somerville, along with the rest of her family, had gone to one of the neighbor's farms or to town on business. The men supposedly broke into the cabin, assaulted the lonely girl, and then took her deep into the forest. There, they buried her alive. At the time, nobody knew any of this. The family knew that Mary had gone missing, but they simply thought that maybe she had run away. The family left Mason County not long after that for Indiana, but Mary remained buried out in the forest. It was shortly after the Somerville family left that farmers and woodsmen began to hear a shrieking woman in the big woods at night. Irish immigrants feared a banshee, other locals feared spirits, and the persistent rumors of the screams and haunting of the woods was all around terrifying. Yet no one knew the story of Mary Somerville. It wasn't until 1986 that her shallow grave was finally discovered in the forest by a group of strip miners. Mining was halted and staff from a local funeral home were called in to exhume her remains, later giving them a proper burial at Zuspan Cemetery. And since then, the ghost of Mary Somerville has remained mostly quiet. An Abandoned Village in Lancashire, England, a once abandoned village in the woods has now become a beautiful public park filled with fascinating ruins. It's just an hour from Manchester with full stone remnants and ancient bridges. And yet by day, there is nothing scary about it. The abandoned village of Wycollar is complete with arched bridges dated back to the 13th century and some as old as 1,000 years. There's a grand mansion called Wycollar Hall that's mostly collapsed but it's overall a fairly peaceful and picturesque place. At least it is until the sun goes down. By night, the abandoned village is rumored to be haunted. It helps to know that Wycollar was a handloom weaver's village before the Industrial Revolution. After the revolution, residents found themselves out of work, with no way to pay the bills or feed their families. They moved to the nearest industrial town and never returned. 
For over a century, all the buildings had been abandoned, neglected, and are slowly falling to pieces. To make matters worse, there is a local legend that says a ghost horseman gallops in and out of the village during the full moon. Locals even talk about a woman dressed in black who is sometimes seen in the shattered windows of the derelict structures. Yet on the flip side, the abandoned hall was said to be the inspiration for the book Jane Eyre, the romance novel. As you can see, the abandoned woodland village is either terrifying and foreboding or a little slice of heaven. It all depends on how you see it. Blonde Timber Rattlesnake A woman in Mississippi encountered a blonde timber rattlesnake. She was collecting berries back in September when she came across the wildly venomous serpent. And while rattlesnakes themselves aren't particularly rare, this one proved to be so rare that nobody had ever documented it before. It was Daniel Ladner who made the discovery. She and her friend Matt, along with her two daughters, were picking muscadines to make muscadine jelly. She bent over, went to pick some up, and realized there was a rattlesnake just two feet from her face, staring at her. She immediately screamed, pushed her young daughter out of the way, and stumbled back from the snake. She's lucky it didn't reach out to bite her when she screamed and made all the sudden movements. Danielle managed to get her daughters into the nearby vehicle, but before she left, she pulled out her phone to take a picture of the snake. It just looked so strange to her that she needed to have proof of what she'd seen. She also alerted the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks. They sent an officer to capture the blonde rattlesnake, and as it turned out, the snake was so rare that the chances of Danielle encountering it were so low that they can't even be calculated. That's according to herpetologist Terry Vandeventer. Terry also says the snake wasn't a true albino, but probably afflicted by hypomelanism, turning it pale blonde but leaving some color remaining. Have you ever encountered a snake in the woods? What happened? Let me know in the comments below. Goats in the Woods Dead goats were discovered in the forest near Hardyville, South Carolina. At least four small and bloodied goat corpses were found in the woods near Honey Hill Road, sparking an explosion of outrage. Locals have begun spreading rumors that the goats were the center of a satanic ritual. For anyone who remembers the satanic panic, a scare that swept America in the 80s and 90s, this should come as no surprise. But according to local police, it had nothing to do with satanists or satanic rituals. Police chief Sam Woodward says the goats weren't stolen or intentionally mutilated. The bodies just appeared to be in such terrible condition due to buzzards and other scavengers making a meal of the remains, leaving them in pretty terrible shape. There is no proof that they were tortured before they died, nor that they were sacrificed. Nonetheless, this hasn't stopped the people of Hardyville from jumping right on the Satanism wagon. It didn't help that additional skulls were found at the scene, suggesting other creatures had been sacrificed in recent days. But again, according to the local police, there is no devil worship happening here. What do you think is going on? Let me know in the comments below. Canadian Bigfoot on Christmas night 2021, a group of travelers moving through Silverton in British Columbia spotted what they believe might have been Bigfoot. The four friends were heading down remote Highway 6. The people sitting in the front of the vehicle saw what they described as a large, man-like figure strolling along the side of the road. I say the side of the road, but keep in mind how rural this road is. On either side are woods that go on for hundreds of miles. The friends were so surprised that they stopped the vehicle and got out. They say they had one last glimpse of a figure as large as a grizzly bear, only shaped like a human being, sprinting into the forest and vanishing. When they looked around, they found its tracks, a single pair of foot-like prints leading straight into the forest. Residents of the community were shocked and excited by the possible Bigfoot sighting, though many remain skeptical. What do you think? A moose? A bear? A notorious cryptid? Let me know in the comments! Missing in the Woods Over two years after Rosemary Rodriguez from Texas went missing, the police found her remains in the woods. They actually found her body inside of her car, a lime green hatchback that vanished with her back in 2020. The hatchback was discovered on New Year's Eve 2021 by a man hiking through the forest. When he realized there was a human body inside the car, he immediately called the police. What remains unclear to investigators is how the missing woman or her vehicle got into the woods. 
It was pretty deep into some very dense foliage, completely overgrown by vegetation to the point where it was almost invisible. The investigators couldn't even get it out by themselves. They had to bring in heavy equipment just to haul the vehicle out of the trees. The Texas Rangers are currently working the case, but they can't say yet whether this was an accident or a murder. That being said, it's hard to imagine Rosemary drove her car all the way into the woods and then sat behind the steering wheel while she slowly starved to death. This just doesn't seem to make any sense. Bad delivery man. In Alabama, the people of Blount County were having a problem with their deliveries. Dozens of people were not receiving them. Hundreds of packages never showed up to their intended recipients and people were getting upset. Then, in a wooded ravine near the small town of Hayden, someone stumbled upon over 400 packages dumped indiscriminately. They were all FedEx packages and had been abandoned in the woods by a driver who couldn't be bothered to drop them off where they were supposed to go. Since the discovery, the police have tracked down the rogue FedEx driver and brought him in for questioning. But no motive has been given yet as to why he felt compelled to drive into the woods and abandon the packages instead of just taking them to the people who ordered them, or at least quitting his job. Even more bizarre is the fact that he never stole anything. All of the packages were still unopened. The police were actually so worried about locals getting wind of the discovery and showing up to loot the boxes that they had deputies protect the dump site until FedEx workers could arrive and collect them. A Hidden Bunker A pair of friends walking through the woods in northern Germany came across a few pipes sticking out of the ground. The pipes looked suspicious to them, so they followed them to a hidden bunker. The pipes were actually periscopes, connected to rooms beneath the ground where soldiers could survey the woods to see if anyone was coming. Following the periscopes, the friends came to a concrete entrance embedded in a hillside. Naturally, the friends entered the bunker and found themselves in an underground place larger than either of them could have ever imagined. The friends journeyed through green and white hallways reminiscent of an abandoned asylum. The place was rotten, the pipes were rusted, and there was bizarre graffiti painted all over the walls. It smelled terrible, as if they were walking through a sewer. Some of the rooms were completely blocked off by rubble in the doorways. There were holes in the wall, abandoned furnaces once used to heat the underground complex, and all kinds of strange abandoned chunks of equipment. It was an urban explorer's dream come true. But even after the friends posted photos of their journey online and word of the discovery spread across the net, nobody was able to identify the bunker. We still don't know what it was used for. The one theory that makes some sense is that it was perhaps a Nazi stronghold during World War II. Whoever occupied the bunker abandoned it in a hurry, possibly at the end of the war, stripping everything of importance and leaving the rest to be forgotten. A Mysterious Vanishing a missing couple from New Jersey were discovered dead in a dense forest near their home. According to the Stafford Township Police Department, the bodies of Gary and Lorraine Parker were found in the Warren Grove woods using a drone. And while it may not be that rare to find a couple of bodies in a New Jersey forest, the way in which these people were found is very strange. The details that make this discovery unusual are that they were found no more than 250 yards away from their home. They were also found about 70 yards from an ATV that people believe they had driven into the woods themselves. They were even lying together in the dirt as if they had just laid down to take a nap. The couple had originally gone missing back in November. Over 100 volunteers and police officers formed a search party and scanned the woods near their home but were unable to locate the pair. It wasn't until they used a special drone to scan the densest part of the forest that they finally found the bodies. Since their bodies have been recovered, police have been unable to determine a cause of death. It looks like they literally just dropped dead close enough to their home that they could have even walked back. Police don't even know why they ended up in that part of the forest, in what was basically a thicket. This really is one of those mysteries that we may never solve. Even if one had been injured, the other would have been able to walk back home to call for help. Plus, when people searched the home, they discovered Lorraine's cane still inside. Considering she had mobility issues, there is no way she would have left her house without it. It's almost as if they sleepwalked onto their ATV, drove into the thicket, and then just died mysteriously. Giant Squid Giant squid sightings are incredibly rare due to the creature's elusive nature and the fact that they usually live very, very deep in the ocean. On average, 
humans spot one just once every few years. So it came as a huge surprise when Adele Gross and her husband encountered a stranded giant squid in 2020 during their daily morning walk in Cape Town, South Africa. Upon first seeing the bizarre beached creature on Golden Mile Beach, Adele's first instinct was to try putting it back into the ocean. But when she took a closer look, she realized that the squid was dead and just happened to be remarkably intact without any visible injuries. She theorized that large swells had washed it ashore the night before. The dead creature was roughly 13 feet long and weighed around 660 pounds. It was considerably smaller than a 30-foot-long school bus-sized giant squid that appeared on the beach in Cantabria, Spain in 2013. But giant squids can grow even larger than this, with some reports claiming that they reach up to 60 feet long. Many experts argue that this is unlikely, but still believe that the creatures can get pretty big, reaching up to 42 feet long. The truth is that scientists are still trying to come up with concrete answers for how large giant squids can grow. After all, it wasn't until 2004 that they first captured images of this seldom seen species in its natural habitat, and they still know relatively little about it. While not as large as its mythological relative, the Kraken, it was certainly still a rather startling sight to come across while getting some fresh air. What would you do if you saw a giant squid on the beach? Let me know in the comments below. Pig-Faced Shark Italian naval officers on the island of Elba recently posted alarming photos of a dead shark with an eerily pig-like face on social media, sending internet users into a frenzy over the creature's homely appearance. They had just pulled the creepy carcass from the water. And the fish might look deformed, but it's not. Formerly known as an angular rough shark, it's nicknamed the pigfish due to its appearance and because it's known to emit a pig-like grunt when it's removed from the water. <coughs> the species is common throughout the Mediterranean, but like most other sharks, it's become vulnerable to the effects of the fishing industry. Its numbers have been declining for decades, bringing the pigfish one step away from being classified as endangered on the International Union for Conservation of Nature Red List. The angular rough shark is just one of several strange sharks that have been found in the region in recent years. In 2019, a foot-long, skinless, toothless shark was caught off the Sardinia coast. Experts ruled out the possibility that it was a new species and were surprised to learn that the creature was around three years old when it died. Despite its ailments, it grew at a normal rate, ate well, and lived a relatively normal life. They concluded that the fish had a genetic mutation but were unsure whether the mutation was natural or caused by chemical pollution, and announced plans to continue investigating. The Oarfish As the world's longest bony fish species, oarfish reach up to 56 feet long. Because they live at depths of around 3,300 feet, they are seldom seen and are difficult to observe. Consequently, scientists know very little about oarfish, even though the species was first described back in 1772. It's a real-life sea serpent. These prehistoric-looking deep dwellers can weigh as much as 600 pounds. Every now and then, someone spots an oarfish, giving researchers the rare opportunity to study the species. But again, it is rare, and when it happens, it's pretty shocking. In 2013, snorkeling instructor Jasmine Santana spotted an oarfish off the California coast in Toyon Bay. She approached cautiously before realizing that the creature was dead and tried pulling it to shore. It took the help of more than 15 of Santana's colleagues to drag the 18-foot specimen back to land. This was an unlikely incident to begin with, but things got even weirder when just five days later, a 14-foot-long oarfish washed ashore on an oceanside California beach. The two strandings were probably not a coincidence, according to biologist Milton Love, who told reporters that strong currents and swells probably pulled the two giant fish to shore and killed them. In late 2020, a 16.4-foot-long oarfish was caught off eastern Taiwan in the aftermath of two earthquakes. Here, they are known as earthquake fish because local legend goes that these fish are spotted when there is going to be an earthquake. 
A seafood restaurant owner named Chen Kuo Pin paid $560 for the fish, noting in an interview that it was the largest earthquake fish he had ever seen. Despite their imposing size and off-putting appearance, oarfish are not dangerous to humans. Not only is it highly unlikely for a person to cross paths with one, but they lack real teeth and are not capable of eating a person. But imagine if you were an ancient mariner and came across one of these. It would look fearsome indeed. Rare Octopus In 2020, Washington State resident Ron Newberry captured a photo of a weird creature during the morning low tide on Whidbey Island and Puget Sound. Unsure of what the three and a half foot long specimen was, he posted the image on social media and sent it to the local press. Numerous commenters chimed in with their opinion on what the animal might be, including a Seattle-based engineer who speculated that it was a deep-sea Dumbo octopus, but even experienced scientists were unsure. Marine ecology researcher Dr. Megan Deethier told local papers that at first glance, she thought the creature looked like something from outer space. She added that the specimen didn't look like any common local species. Scientists across the country came to the general consensus that the animal was a seven-armed octopus. It's not super unusual to see one of these creatures in the area, although it doesn't typically travel that far north, according to NOAA biologist Elena Jorgensen. She explained that wind from a recent storm may have blown the octopus into Puget Sound and that it may have died in the low salinity waters. Zoologist Michael Vecchione told the news that he was surprised to hear of a seven-armed octopus in the region, but he conceded that shifting animal distributions are not unusual in the world lately. Did you know there were seven-armed octopus species? I don't think I did until now, and we've been talking about strange ocean critters on this channel for a while. Let me know in the comments below. Sea hares Last June, an Australian woman spotted a jelly-like sea creature in the city of Fremantle along the country's west coast. She took a photo and posted it on social media in hopes that someone could tell her what it was. Almost immediately, people began warning the woman not to let her dog anywhere near the bizarre blob. Commenters identified it as a sea hare, which contains toxins that are dangerous to canines. These strange specimens turn up somewhat frequently along Australian beaches, but many people who encounter them have never seen one before. Just months earlier, a man who spotted one in the same area described it as alien-like in a social media post, indicating that he was completely unfamiliar with it. Macquarie University professor Cullum Brown told reporters that sea hares are mildly toxic, depending on the algae they have been eating. He added that when they are alarmed, they produce a purple dye. In one particularly disturbing instance in 2019, a beachgoer in Queensland found a bleeding sea hare at Scarborough Beach. The blood was actually ink. There are 23 known sea hare species throughout the Indo-Pacific Ocean, with some reaching weights of up to 31 pounds by adulthood. And it's true that they are toxic to dogs. While the severity of the effects varies from one dog to the next, symptoms can include excessive drooling, spasms, vomiting, seizures, and even death. Experts urge dog owners to immediately take their canine companion to the vet if they come into contact with this sea hare. Are you familiar with these unusual sea creatures? What about some of their cousins, like sea bunnies or leaf sheep? They're pretty amazing, right? Hairy Sea Monster in mid-2018, a hairy, truck-sized sea monster washed ashore in the Philippine province of Oriental Mindoro, leaving onlookers mystified. Covered in hair-like strands, the grayish-white creature measured roughly 20 feet long and was around 4 feet wide at its thickest point. It stunk like any several-ton rotting carcass would. Local fishery law enforcement officer Vox Crusada said that the odor was so overwhelming he nearly vomited while taking tissue samples. That's a tough job. It must have been pretty intense for a seasoned expert who's been around plenty of dead sea animals to have such a hard time. Locals nicknamed the rancid creature the Globster, while officials worked to determine what it was. While it wasn't readily identifiable to the untrained eye, Crusada said that the animal appeared to be a decomposing whale. This makes sense given its size, and it wasn't the first dead whale to appear on a Philippine beach in recent years. In 2017, the year before the Globster appeared, a similar-sized hairy sea monster weighing an estimated 4,400 pounds was found in the Dinagat Islands. 
These creatures are known to appear elsewhere, including basically anywhere with a coastline. And they do turn out to be whales most of the time, even if they look much different in their rotting form. Rare Jellyfish During his daily run one day along Vanderbilt Beach in Florida, Anatoly Smirnov spotted an odd four-foot-wide jellyfish in the sand. He had never seen anything like it. Smirnov snapped a picture of the strange fish and sent it to a local news channel, joking that he almost got eaten by a giant jellyfish. He told the news that he runs along the beach all the time, but it was the first time he encountered this type of creature. Experts identified it as a large species nicknamed the Pink Meanie. It's not exactly harmless, but its sting typically feels no more painful than a mosquito bite, according to marine biologist James Douglas. The animal's tentacles can grow up to 70 feet long. Douglas surmised that other jellyfish may have attracted the pink meanie to shore. And the sighting isn't as rare as it may have seemed to Smirnoff, especially during that time of year, when the species' prey is quite abundant in local waters. Douglas said that there were possibly several more pink meanies lingering in the area at the time. So watch out, you don't want to get wrapped up with a jellyfish. Mystery Species and Amazon River Monster Another Florida resident, Ivan Caesar, was spending time along the Gulf Coast earlier this year at Cayo Costa State Park when he spotted the skeleton of a strange creature that he didn't recognize. He snapped some photos and posted them on social media to see if anyone knew what it was. But nobody did, and even experts were baffled by Caesar's discovery. They didn't think the animal was a shark, since shark skeletons are made of cartilage and tend to sink. Some people suggested that it was a predatory Amazonian fish called an arapaima, since one had been found just days earlier in another part of the state. But this was also unlikely, because arapaimas are freshwater fish, and the Gulf of Mexico is saltwater, part of the larger Atlantic Ocean. Researchers think that the fish could be a deep-dwelling species that rarely ventures near the water's surface. It may have been killed by a toxic algal bloom called red tide, which is known to occasionally wreak havoc on Florida's coastal wildlife. Wildlife officials were certainly concerned about the discovery of the arapaima, even if they believed the two cases were unrelated. The state already struggles with numerous invasive species, and a South American monster fish is the last thing a fragile Floridian ecosystem needs. Arapaimas can grow to be 10 feet long and weigh as much as 200 pounds. The one that washed ashore in Cape Coral in 2020 was roughly five and a half feet long. It may have been someone's exotic pet that they released into the wild when it got too big. But sadly, this is how many of Florida's invasive species establish their problematic presence. Authorities urged civilians to contact them immediately if they spotted another arapaima in hopes of stopping the species from establishing a breeding population. Blue Dragons Maria Wagner has lived near the beach for most of her life. She even runs a Facebook page dedicated to the local shore and its wildlife. But even this seasoned marine enthusiast was stunned when over a dozen weird blue dragon-like creatures washed up on the beach. Maria had never seen anything like them in her home in Cape Town, South Africa. Fearing that they might sting, she avoided putting them back in the sea as she had done many times before with other, more recognizable animals. As it turned out, Maria was smart for not touching the beach specimens. Nicknamed blue dragons, they absorb the stinging cells of their prey, which includes the notorious Portuguese man-o'-war. They store the venom in their tentacles, where it remains ready for use against predators and other threats. Stings can cause nausea, vomiting, and allergic skin reactions, including itching, rashes, and lesions. While the sighting was a first for Maria, blue dragons are known to occasionally wash up on beaches in the US and Australia while drifting through the sea on their backs, allowing winds and currents to carry them along. But if you see one, don't touch it. Sea potatoes. Beachgoers in Cornwall, England were perplexed when hundreds of tennis ball-sized, heart-shaped creatures washed ashore in 2018. But the sight was no surprise to marine biologists, who immediately recognized the specimens as sea potatoes. Also known as heart urchins, they spend their lives buried in the sand along the coastlines of several European and Asian countries, including Ireland, Japan, and the United Kingdom. They are related to starfish and are covered in short yellowish-brown spines. 
But how did they end up stranded on the beach in Cornwall? Scientists believe that the sea potatoes got mixed up in a mass mating event that went wildly wrong. The creatures likely left their burrows to breed and were killed and washed ashore in a storm. At first glance, sea potatoes may seem like unimportant blobs, but they are a hugely critical component to the seafloor environments in which they live. They are equipped with an internal hydraulic system that enables them to burrow up to 9 inches into the seafloor. But they are not immune to mass stranding events, as the incident in Cornwall shows. And it certainly wasn't the first such stranding to happen, even if many onlookers had never seen anything quite like it. Thanks for watching! What's your favorite sea creature? Let me know in the comments below! And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe! See you next time! Bye!